We're going to move quickly through these last bits of working the outer edging. So you can see that we're just completing our second set of triple pico loops and we're going to move on pretty quickly to working the ones around the top. You'll see as we begin our work with the next pico loop that the top um, bottom, the two lower pico loops uh, for the very point usually work even with this top arc. And so we're trying to keep a good visual flow by matching up the, the different elements. So from here, I'll throw my thread back to where it's even with the arc on the interior of the point, and I'll create my loop. This one will buttonhole across completely with no pico, and then we'll work a second loop running down the other side, which we will work halfway across, and then throw back to the first loop and work our very top uh, pico loop. We are about halfway across the second of the lower pico loops for the very tip of the point. And now we will take the thread and we're going to throw back to the previous one. Now this one we can leave a little bit longer and looser so that we have a more prominent, almost ring-like appearance to the pico loop at the top. But just like every pico loop, we will throw three foundation threads. Uh, in this instance, I am actually changing threads while I'm in the middle of this. So you can see the old end of my thread and the new end of my thread just carefully tucked under the... Um, the tacking stitches for the template along the outer edge. It just helps keep them out of the way a little bit. Once I have done enough stitches, I will come in and actually clip them and remove them. So they'll disappear part way through this video. Uh, anyway, so this one will go, see, right there. And I can just cut it right off because I've already worked over enough of it that it won't come loose. The second one I'll have to wait for a little bit to cut it off. But for now, I'm just going to keep going. As before, you can see that I have to have the template flat on the tabletop, and I'm bracing with my fingers and controlling the, uh, controlling the position of the loop as I pull each stitch snug. And that's just so that I can keep everything looking very regular and precise. And we'll just keep working down the other side of this pico loop and then make our way down onto the one below. Once this tip set is complete, then we can just repeat the same process that we used on the other side to make the two sets of triple pico loops for the final side of the point. Once that's done, we're actually done making this piece. As these videos have progressed, I've tried to make them shorter and shorter because I'm assuming that as you work through each step, you are learning better and better the motions and the process. And so you don't need me to uh, linger for too long on instructions that you've already heard before. So we flashed ahead to where I'm finishing up the um, first set of triple pico loops for the far side of the point. And we're working our way down the final of the lower loops and then we'll do one more set and we'll be done. Now I haven't really said anything specific about the number of stitches along the base of each of these lower loops and that's because it varies somewhat depending on the size of your thread and upon the pattern that you're using and the proportions that you want. Typically I use 12 to 14 stitches along the base of one of the arcs and about 16 stitches along the arc itself. 
We're almost done in this portion of the video here. I have just a few stitches left. Once this arc is complete, then I will move the thread down into the tops of the uh, stitches along the top of the square. And in those, I will actually just use a whip stitch and I'll whip the thread through uh, probably five or six stitches and then cut it off. And that just provides me a nice innocuous place to secure the thread and leave an end. It shouldn't show, it shouldn't come undone. You know, lace doesn't get the same kind of stresses that other types of clothing do. So I am very grateful to be able to finish off in this location because I think it'll be pretty well protected from wear and abrasion. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to remove it from the card. And I think um, you'll be really excited to see this piece of lace just come to life. It's literally like magic. And even this many decades after learning how to make lace, I think there is not a single part of the process that excites me as much as clipping all the threads and pulling them off the back and uh, then seeing the lace just come free and complete.